Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements project. This time we'll be using Photoshop Elements to do a zoom portrait effect. Let me just show you that right now. Just like that. This is a fun and easy Photoshop Elements project to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of work and it's fairly quick. All it requires is that you have a nice portrait and that the background has a lot of things happening. So you have some stuff in there to give you that zoom quality. Now, if you enjoy these kinds of projects, make sure you take a look at my channel. I have hundreds of projects over there for Photoshop Elements. Also take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's start by just closing down this Photoshop Elements file right here. Not gonna bother saving that one. Let's go over to my favorite site for getting free images online and that's Pixabay, which is right here. And the image we're looking at is this one right here. And I'll put this link in the description so you can go ahead and just download this. So we'll start by downloading this and I'll download this to my normal projects folder on my hard drive. You want the 1920 by 1271. That's a really good size to work with. Choose download. And I'm not logged in right now. So I have this little captcha thing going in. And then you simply click at the pictures in here and whatever it asks you to do, choose those pictures and you get past that one. If you miss it, they might give you a second one like this. And there we go, that's fine. Go ahead and download. Now it's free to get an account at Pixabay. And I normally use my account or log into my account. It just makes downloading faster. You don't have that capture thing popping up each time you do a download. So go ahead and download it right here in my projects folder, choose save. Let's now go back over to Photoshop Elements and open up that picture. Here we are, and then file, open. And here's my projects folder. And there's our image, open it up. Now my images come in as floating windows. We don't need that for this project, so I'll just go ahead and just dock that right there. Now, first step here is to make two copies of our background layer. That will leave us the background as a safety, and then a layer for doing the zoom effect, and a layer for the girl in the foreground. So right-click where it says background, duplicate layer, choose OK. And then do that again, right-click and duplicate layer, choose OK. There's our two copies, let's hide this one. If you want to name these layers up here, just click into the name like that. That'll be our zoom layer and click in the name up here. And this is our subject layer. Okay, let's hide the zoom layer just temporarily. On our subject layer, we're gonna be making a selection around the girl. You can try, if you have a later version of Photoshop Elements, you can try using the select subject and see how well that does it. Just see how this does actually. And that's not too bad. I would go in here and do a little cleanup around the edges with the refine edge tool. You can do that just by changing to any selection tool. You can then reach the refine edge and do that. If you don't happen to have select subject, let me just back out of this, I'll delete that selection. Then just grab your lasso tool up here. Make sure we're on new selection. I have feathering set at one. And let's just make a quick selection right around the ground. This doesn't need to be fancy at all. Make sure we get the outside of that hair right here. And just follow fairly close to the figure. It doesn't need to be right up against the figure. It can be a little sloppy, it doesn't matter. It's best if you don't go inside the figure, but that's all that really matters in here is just stay just fairly close and run to the beginning again, right there. Okay, so either way of making your selection is fine. We now come down to the refine edge and we'll clean up our selection. Now, if you did this with the select subject, you won't need to clean up the areas around the sides. They'll be fine. All you need to care about is just the hair. In this instance, with the hand-drawn selection, we do need to get the areas around the sides here. So let's just go ahead and just Pull this brush right along that edge, right along the edge of her shoulder and down to the sleeve. And that tells Photoshop Elements to go in and re-examine that edge and do a better job. We'll get this part of the hair first. We'll come back and we'll finish the trickier stuff after this is done. So just work around here again, just go down the side, let Photoshop Elements figure that out. That's good. Okay, over here, Kind of work out and then work your way in a little bit. It may take a few brushes in here to get this to work properly. There we go. It's kind of missing that section right here. So I might want to fix that on the layer mask. We'll take care of that in just a second. And then go up around the top here, get those thinner hairs. It's not that critical in this particular project, which is nice. Okay, that's all good. Now come down here, we already have our layer up here. So just Change the output here to layer mask, choose okay. There's our layer mask. And it's a little bit sloppy right in here, as I mentioned. I wanna clean that up. So over here to the layer mask side, and let's zoom in on that. 
There we are. And on the layer mask, black hides white shows. So I want to hide this. So grab a paintbrush. I have our color here as black. I want to have a soft edge brush, not too large. You can kind of see it right there. That's a 21 soft edge on this picture. And then just come in and paint in and get close. That does need to be perfect. Just remove a lot of this kind of fuzziness right out there. And that's all I really care about is that bit of stuff right in there. And aside from that, I think our picture is fine. Come right against that edge here. That should work. I'll hold the space bar down, move it around. Yeah, we're looking okay everywhere else. There's not really any real issues. This one's a pretty good picture. Again, because of the kind of background, you can be a little bit looser on the layer mask. It's not that critical. Okay, control zero to fit screen again. There's our foreground image. I'll go back to the move tool here. It's a good habit to be in to always go back to the move tool because that tool doesn't really damage your image. So it's a safe tool to be on just in case. Okay, let's now hide that layer, show the zoom layer. Now in the zoom layer, we need to get rid of the top of her head, right where that horizon line is. I wanna have sky above that. What's below it doesn't matter, but I wanna have sky above that particular line. Otherwise we get a big head shaped halo kind of a thing going on, which doesn't look good in the picture. Now this doesn't need to be very cleanly done. So I'll just grab the phone stamp tool. It's a pretty good size right here. And I'll come over here into the clouds. Hold the Alt key down, click on the cloud spot right here, let go, and pull that over and begin painting in. And just go as far as you can until you begin seeing a mess like that. Then come back in and do it again. You need to stay away from this steeple right here, that tower. But same idea, just take it as far as you can. Each time you see that little crosshairs, it means that I'm clicking at a spot and I'm going left to right. I'm not going top down, left to right. And just take it as far as you can and then come back in. Sometimes you have to come in and do it a little bit like that, a little shorter work. And just take it down so that we're right up where the horizon would be if it's in behind her. There we go. Now on the clone stamp tool down here where it says aligned, that means that if I click over here and then move, then this is a plus sign over there. That plus sign moves with the clone stamp circle. That's the aligned part of that. So it's cloning from and moving as you're cloning to. It gives you the best clone effect. The clone overlay, I never touch this stuff. That's fine at the default settings. And again, it doesn't matter if you're getting repeating patterns in here or anything. All we want to do is just get that head out of the sky. Okay, that's good for the background. We'll now put the zoom effect on this. Again, I'll go back here to my move tool. Like I said, good habit to be in. Go up to the filter menu, come down to blur. This is a blur effect. You want the radial blur right here. It's a real old filter. It normally looks like this, kind of a spinning effect like that. And it twirls an image. Kind of neat effect, but not what I want here. Come down here, change it to a zoom blur and pull the amount all the way to the right-hand side. So it's taking from the middle of the picture and zooming everything out to the outsides. That's what that does. Choose OK. And there is the blur effect. You see right here, that's why we cut the head off. So that this part here it doesn't have any head shape in there, it's just clean sky. Okay, our zoom is good. We can now go ahead and show our foreground subject. That's looking really nice. Let's now do a little bit of tweaking on the values and the colors on our subject, make her really pop out of that background. So go back up to that layer. And let's first adjust our levels. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels right here. Where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. Here's our adjustment levels. And I want to take the left side, this is our black control. I want to bring that in a bit. This makes the darks darker. Don't go too far over blocks up. Just bring them in just a little bit to kind of enrich the darks. On the right hand side, this makes the brights brighter or the whites whiter, bring it in just a little bit. What we're doing right here is we're adjusting the contrast. We're making it more contrasty. But we're doing the light part of the contrast and the dark part of the contrast separately, which gives us more control on that. Now it's pretty good right in here. You also can adjust your midtones if you want to, but I'll just leave those at the default one. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty good setting right there. 19 for the blacks, 230 for the whites. Close that down. I also want to make her just a little bit more saturated, not much, just a touch. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer again, and hue saturation. Same thing, check that checkbox, choose okay, and the control changes. 
And right here, the middle control is your saturation. Go to the right just a little bit. If you go too far, it does that. So just a little bit up, I think, you know, right about plus seven, maybe. It's a real subtle adjustment, maybe a little bit more than that for and after. That's good. Just a little bit brighter on the colors in there. Close it down. And there we go. Now make sure you save this out as a new file. Now, when you're saving, you want to save it first as a Photoshop Elements file, which saves your layers. So you can come back and make adjustments later if you feel like it. So file, come down to save. It's going to automatically save it as that Photoshop file format. I'll just call this one Zoom. And we're still in the Projects folder. Choose Save. And if you want to use this online, then you want either a JPEG or a PNG. I personally prefer the PNG format. So File, come down to Save As. And then change this down here to PNG. And choose Save and OK. And this now saved for the PNG file format. And finally, if you need a print for this, easy to do. Go up here to File, come down to Print. Here's our Print dialog box. Let's check actual size, and that's too big, as you can see. So go to smaller size, eight by 10 is a good one, and crop to fit, there's it out the cropping. I think without cropping looks good. That's a real nice image, and then simply choose print, and we'll then send this to your printer. Now when you're printing this kind of image, I like using the higher quality glossy photo paper in your printer if you're using an inkjet printer. That gives you a much better printout. It's a bit more expensive, but it does really nice prints that way. Now, if you have fun with this project, don't forget to check out my channel where I have hundreds more projects for Photoshop Elements. And also take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, where I teach you everything about the program, how to use all the tools, how to use all the panels on the right-hand side, what all the menus mean, how to use the quick and guided edits, and also how to use the Photoshop Elements organizer as well. So all of that is covered in my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos in the future. And if you really enjoyed this video, why don't you give me a super thanks? I'd really appreciate that. Okay, and I'll see you next time.